Uh, I originally gave this talk at NS conference, um, but I was hoping to do a slightly extended version. So, depending on how fast I am, there will be mm, a couple of examples at the end. Uh, it's about UIView animations. I, I usually talk about core animation, and uh, sometimes the a little bit of the niche stuff. Um, UI view animation is much more mainstream. Uh, and this is looking at how UI view animations work. Starting with a very, very small recap. On iOS, we have both layers and views to present content on the screen. We can create a standalone layer, but we can also create a view that is going to be backed by a layer. The interesting thing is they work slightly different. If I change the property of a layer, then it's going to um, implicitly animate to the new value, for example, the position. Whereas if I do the same thing with a the view, then it just snaps into place. Didn't snap into place. <laughs> Why? <laughs> you all know that it snaps into place. So the short answer can be found in the documentation. Um, it says that the UA view disables implicit animations, except for when you're inside of an animation block, which is the behavior that we are seeing. The slightly, well, that tells us what is happening, but it doesn't explain how. The slightly longer answer can also be found in the documentation, and this time in the documentation for action for key on CA layer. It's well documented, and it tells us that whenever a property changes on the layer, then the layer is looking for the action to run for that property change. And in this terminology, if you're unfamiliar with it, an action is a more general term for an animation, but in fact, CA animation is the the only base class that you're ever going to see. Um, and the layer goes looking for this action in a quite complex little procedure with seven steps or something like that. But the first one is very interesting. The layer asks the delegate for an action. And the layer delegate can return one of three things. It can return the action, in which case it gets run, because it returns an action. The delegate can also return nil, in which case it tells the layer to keep looking for another action, in which case it looks for default animations and such. But it can also return n as null, which tells the layer that it, there should be no animation and uh, the layer should also stop looking. Add to that that the view is the layer's delegate. The view has a mechanism that you can use to say whether or not the layer should animate when a property changes. We can run a very, very small experiment to verify that this is the case. If we ask for the action for the layer, for a property that would normally animate, such as the position, we can see that it returns and is null outside of an animation block. But if we do the same inside of an animation block, then it returns an instance of CA basic animation. We can look more into this um, all because of a class method uh, on UI view, which is called layer class. And it makes it very easy to see what is happening behind the scenes, because um, it tells the view what class should be used when creating the backing layer. So what we can do with it is that we can create a subclass of CA layer. And then we can override the methods that we are interested in knowing more about. And then we can subclass UI view and only override layer class and then return the custom layer. 
in which case, whenever the, in this case, debug view is instantiated, it is going to be backed by a debug layer. And in that one, we can override any of the methods that we know of, and we can print out, well, when they're called, if we want to know in which order things are happening, we can print out their arguments if you want to see what information is being passed into these methods. And if you want, then we can also log out the uh, super implementation's return values before we, in turn, return them. The only thing that we need to make sure is that we always call super so we don't alter the behavior because that sort of ruins the experiment of trying to figure out what is happening. So the, the basic block-based animation API perhaps isn't the most interesting to look at, but we got, to, we got a bunch of new additions in iOS 7. For example, we've got a block-based keyframe animation API, and it shouldn't be very surprising that behind all that, a CA keyframe animation is added to the layer when the block finishes, and it has the values that you specified uh, in the different keyframes. So perhaps more interesting to look at is also the spring-based animation API that we just saw. Uh, what's interesting and notable, notable about it is that it uses a private class which is called CA Spring Animation. Uh, that has been around for some time, but it still isn't made public, even though now we have a higher level API that allows us to use it almost with a one-to-one -one correlation. Not really if you look at the velocity dampening stiffness parameters, which doesn't really correlate with the dampening, which is 0.4 and 15. Uh, they use different models. Another interesting thing is that we can override all of the getters and setters and easily verify that UIKit Dynamics doesn't create CA animations, but instead it sets the transform of the layer and it does it a lot because it does it for every frame. Perhaps the most interesting example is the UI Image View Animation API. Because in that case, there isn't such a strong correlation between the higher level UI view API and the underlying animation. All that you're doing is that you're specifying an array of images, a duration, and then you're telling it to start. But behind that, it's creating a complex keyframe animation, which is discrete, so that it only stops at the exact images. And then it repeats and has the duration and all of that. So at this point, you may ask yourselves, sure, that's nice, but why would you want to do this? Uh, and for once, it can be good. You know, if you're curious, it can be very fun to see what's actually going on behind the scenes. Uh, but it can also be a useful tool if you're trying to build something similar yourself. And this was the point where I ended the talk last time I gave it. But I'm kind of trying to fit in one more thing. First, I need to say that what I'm going to show here is it's a playground project of mine, and it's not production code in any way. And I'm not even 100% sure that this is always a good idea. Um, But you can do the same things yourself, and you can build your own block-based animation APIs on the UI view level. And that's what I'm going to try and show you. And I think my code is on the wrong slide, and I don't see my cursor. There we go. that visible to you? A bunch of commented out code. So I'm going to show you two quick examples uh, of stuff that you can do. I have created, for fun, um, a pop animation API. And what it does is that it takes a block of properties to change, and then it goes back to the values that they had before. 
So if I run this, I know it also repeats with a timer. And it's not a timer in that sense that I hate. It's a, it's a timer that makes sense, I promise. <laughs> so here are a bunch of views, and it runs an animation and goes back to the old value. And the only code to do this is these lines of code. I can change any property, the duration, or anything, and it's going to do this animation. Uh, if you are interested in what it's actually doing, it first runs the animation block. This is on the category on UI view, by the way. And running the animation block, means that I'm going to get all the delegate callbacks for the actions. And what I did before that I didn't mention is that I set a static variable that tells me that, yes, this is my animations, it's not the default ones, so I'm gonna, I want to interrupt it and save a bunch of state. So I save the layer, what key path, and what the current value or the old value was, and then I just return null so that I don't get an animation. Um, and this means that at this point, all the properties have been changed, and I have been asked through this delegate callback for all the animations, and I have returned nothing, but I have stored all the state. Then I can loop through all the state that I saved. I can create an animation which goes from the old value to the new value, back to the old value, and I can just, whoops, I can just add it to the layer. I also need to set the old value, and I do that via key value coding since I have the key path. And this needs to be in a transaction so that you know there isn't an infinite loop of asking for uh, actions all the time, because that would be very stupid. Um, another, which is going to be the last thing I show you, I promise. Another example of cool stuff that you could do is that you don't need to have only one block. You can do this crazy thing, which takes a variadic block argument, which all run with this delay in between each other. So they, what they all do is that they scale these views. Uh, and it kicks them off with a 0.13 second delay. And I can just chain more and more of these blocks to do more animations. And of course, I could have changed any property because it uses the same mechanism. Uh, if you are the least <coughs> interested about how this is done, then you should ask me afterwards, because I think my time is out. Uh, which brings me back to my slides. Which is over for real this time. <laughs>